So in this Trinoff tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to set up the ST2 Pro as a monitor controller where we can switch between two sets of stereo speakers and also two different input sources, stereo input sources. Um, and also I'm going to show you how to use the AES digital inputs and outputs. Uh, let's say you've got a Pro Tools interface with AES outputs or Nuendo like I have here. Um, how to get that into the trend off and clock it correctly. And then also uh, with a set of speakers like the Dynaudio Core 59s, which have AES inputs. So it's possible to use the, the digital in and digital out with the trend off in that way. So this will give you a real world setup that could be used in any professional studio for a comprehensive monitoring control solution and room correction all in one. So now in the quick start video, we used the default preset, which had one stereo input source and one stereo set of speakers, all using the analog connections. So we're going to start with that preset again and modify it to, um, to add these other features that we're talking about. Okay, so here is the ST2 Pro interface on the setup page. The top tab is where we set up sources. Uh, now you can see that this is a stereo configuration with no LFE channels. We can use the next and previous buttons to step through the various channel configurations that are available. So it goes to a two times stereo input. That's like a four channel input. We'll talk about that later. Then we have two by two, which you could consider quad. Then we've got three, three uh, one, which is like an LCR with surround. Um, and then we've got uh, regular LCR, or in this case, LRC, um, and then mono. Now, since the ST2 is a four channel unit, those are the only configurations that are available. However, you can still add LFE channels to any of those configurations. So down on the left, uh, we can give this a source a name. Let's call this first one um, DAW, Oops. like this. That way that's, uh, you know, our DAW outputs. Uh, all right, so now let's add another source here. And I'm gonna name this one, let's call it um, CD player or something like that. Boom. And it's already set up as a stereo. So now we've got uh, two different sources. And if we go back to the home page, you can see up top, I've got sources DAW and CD player. So that's what allows me to switch back and forth between two different input sources. Um, let's say, for example, you're exporting an audio mix down or exporting audio files, and you want to listen to the CD player. Well, because the trend off is a standalone unit, you don't have to wait for the audio mix down, the, the bouncing or exporting to finish before you can listen to something else. You can just simply hit the, the input source over here to CD player, pop in a CD, and you still have your calibrated monitoring environment up and ready and active so you can listen to other material. This is super important in a hardworking professional studio because there's always lots of things going on and downtime waiting for a computer to reboot or something like that um, is, is downtime, it's wasted time. So now we have to figure out what inputs those sources are gonna come into the ST2 on. So let's go down a couple more tabs here to the sources routing page. Now. On the left here, we can see our sources, the DAW, the CD player. Right now, they're both connected to the first two analog inputs. We're going to change that. Um, then you also see this micro input. And what the micro input is, is for the calibration microphone. And um, those use the first, um, or the microphone uses the first four analog inputs when you're performing a calibration. So we can, we can ignore that for now because that's only during the calibration process. Uh, what I'm going to do here is switch the CD player to analog inputs three and four. So now uh, on the home page, if I switch from input source one, um, I'm listening to the analog inputs one and two, and I switch to the CD player, it's going to switch over to analog inputs three and four, and we'll hear that signal. Okay, so now let's set up a second set of speakers. Since the trend off is a four channel unit, you can set up two stereo sets of speakers that are fully optimized. Um, you can also do one set of speakers that uses four channels like LCR with surround or something like that, or LCR with a subwoofer, something like that. It just can't be more than four channels total. So 
for what we're going to do, we're going to have two sets of speakers. Say we've got a big mains and then we've got some console top speakers that we're going to also optimize. So there's two ways to do this. The first method is using two different presets on the Trinoff to switch between the two different speaker sets. Um, this is pretty straight ahead. I'll show you how to do that. Um, the second method is to set up the Trinoff as a four channel system where we have four inputs and four outputs. And it's just a straight patch. In other words, your two inputs that are coming in on one and two, those are going to go to your first set of speakers and inputs three and four are going to go to your second set of speakers. And you have to use an external monitor controller to switch between the two different speaker sets. But you'll have all four channels being optimized uh, by the Trinoff. So I'll show you that method as well. But let's start with the preset method. So the preset method is pretty straight ahead. We're going to set up the system to the first set of speakers, get everything routed correctly, perform uh, a measurement calibration, and then optimization calculation. Um, we can also create uh, the input sources, the two different input sources, and then save the whole thing as a preset. Then we're going to modify that preset for the second set of speakers. We're going to change the routing for the set of speakers, go through a whole other uh, measurement calibration and optimization calculation for the second set of speakers and then save that as a preset which will also maintain those input sources so you can still switch between DAW and CD player. Um, okay so we'll need to make sure that the speaker routing is correct for each speaker set. Uh, the default preset has analog outputs going to the first set of speakers. So let's go to setup and we can go to speakers right here. Loudspeaker number we have two loudspeakers and if we go to the speaker routing, we can see right now they're routed to analog one and two. So you can go ahead and do uh, the measurement and optimization calculation like this, and then you're gonna save that as a preset, say speakers, you know, main speakers or something. Then what we're gonna do is change the routing here on the setup page to analog three and four. And now you're gonna go back, do another measurement, calibration, optimization calculation, and save this exact same thing as a new preset. So all the preset is doing is changing the speaker output routing and also the optimization calculation. So when you switch presets, you're going to switch speakers. The input sources will be maintained, so you can still go back and forth between DAW and CD player, and uh, the preset will switch between the two different speaker sets. Now in the second method, we're going to set up the trend off as a four-channel optimizer. It's going to have a dual stereo input and then a four channel speaker system. And how you do this is use an external monitor controller to send signals either to the first two inputs, which go to the main speakers, or uh, the second stereo set of inputs, which will then go to the other set of speakers. But we're going to optimize and, and calibrate uh, all four speakers together as one system. So let's take a look at how to do that. So if I go back to the speakers tab here, I'm going to increase the loudspeaker number to four like this. Then I'm going to go to the speakers routing and uh, I'm going to set it up like this. One, two, three, and four. So analog outputs one and two are going to go to my main speakers and analog outputs three and four are going to go to my secondary set of speakers. Now, on sources, we're not going to be able to have two sources. So I'm going to remove the second source and I'm going to create a two by stereo input. And that's going to allow me to have two stereo sets of inputs, one for one set of speakers, one for the other set of speakers. So at this point, the, the trend off is just acting as a four channel optimizer for two different sets of speakers. And I can go to sources routing here, and right now it's analog one, two, three, and four. So you would take uh, the outputs of your monitor controller, let's say the first stereo set of speakers, and go into analog inputs one and two. And then the monitor B, or the, the B set of speakers, your alternate set of speakers, and take those outputs and route them to analog inputs three and four. Then when you switch on the external monitor controller, you're switching the signals between the first set of speakers through the trend off or the second set of speakers through the trend off. So once you've done this, now you need to go and perform a um, calibrated measurement, 
of all four speakers simultaneously and then create an optimization calculation for all four sets of speak all four speakers at once and then you can save that again as a preset and now you can switch back and forth between those two different sets of speakers okay so what about the AES digital inputs and outputs well the key thing to remember here is that when we're using digital signals that we have to make sure the clocking is correct so um, let's go to the clock tab here on the setup page and we can see the clock mode right now is set to master 48 kilohertz um, but when we activate an AES digital input we need to make sure that the trend off is in sync with the clock source coming from the uh, AES signal so what you can do is choose the AES 1 and 2 let's say that's where you have the AES input plugged in as your clock source and in order to do that we have to make the clock mode slave and then here we go AES 1 and 2 is already selected now some people use uh, word clock in their studio to synchronize multiple devices together and the trend off has a word clock input so you could set the clock source to word clock and uh, that way the trend off will sync to your master clock source and that'll keep everything in sync that's how you set up a um, digital input now if we go to the sources routing we would obviously have to select digital one and two which would be the AES pair one and two for one of our sources in order to get that to work so in my studio I have the Dynaudio Core 59s which have an AES digital input and if I want to use that with the trend off I simply have to go to the speaker routing tab and select digital one and two as the outputs for um, that speaker set and because the AES uh, digital signals contain both the left and right channels on one cable I can daisy chain the speaker so I take the AES out one and two from the trend off plug it into the first speaker over here set that speaker to the right channel so it only hears the right channel and then take the AES output and daisy chain it to the other core 59 and set that speaker to the left channel that way I can hear the stereo image um, using a daisy chain cabling system so now you've set up a pristine digital audio monitoring chain with the trend off room optimization on all your speakers and you can use the trend off app to switch between input sources and also control the volume of your speaker and using either the preset method or the four channel method you can switch between two different sets of speakers so you get a lot of versatility there and of course the great sound of room optimization from the trend off so thanks for watching and i uh, will see you next time